Let's bring in our good doctor. He, of course, you can find out more. He's the general chairman of healthwatchusa.org. Doctor, doctor, give me the hopefully good news. Uh, I am so frustrated when I hear of a scenario uh, like that in Florida where they're having a Super Bowl not very far from Naples and Tampa uh, in a few days uh, where I guess they're going to have some people in the crowd but not a full crowd. Uh, are we just sort of clueless or is the greed to make a profit? I understand we need, people need to make money, but I don't understand this. And, and particularly when you see this video of the people who are working there not wearing masks. Where are we today, Doc? Uh, both, both clueless and in a cycle of greed to make money. I mean, there's no other way to say it. And the other thing that's so frustrating for me, Jeff, is that we have hundreds of thousands of people working for key frontline industries that have little protection, little support, no testing, no bubbling. They're out there risking their lives. And the only thing that anybody is talking about is sports. I mean, to me, it drives me crazy. This is a small number of employees. It's not an infrastructure requirement that we need right now. People are having trouble eating. They're not so concerned necessarily of finding a large screen TV to watch the Super Bowl. Unfortunately, there's a bunch of people that are going to do that this Sunday, which will probably be another super event and spread the virus. And with the new more infectious variants, it could be setting us up for a disaster within the next few weeks. So yeah, I am very frustrated at this. And I have seen those same pictures. Believe me, I've seen them of our legislators leaving the Capitol building after the hearings. Uh, they were mainly on the Republican side of not wearing masks. We've seen this with local officials here in Kentucky. It is very, very frustrating. And what drives me even crazier is, is that while they're messaging one thing, a lot of them appear to be first in line trying to get the vaccine. So to me, that's just the pinnacle of hypocrisy. We need to get this virus under control. We need to have consistent messaging on both the Democrat and Republican sides. We have a few people that do this, but even on the side of the Democrats, as we know, as you know, we've discussed in the past, sometimes you have good messaging, but then the personal actions of the elected official doesn't match the messaging. And that creates a lot of mistrust. So we need to get everybody to take this pandemic seriously. It goes far beyond sports. We could well be into the roughest weeks ahead because of these variants, which are now in the United States. Well, I couldn't agree with you more, uh, particularly on what is happening in Florida, particularly what is happening uh, this Sunday. And, and, you know, as you well know, because you've been on with her, Melissa Tomlinson uh, is a uh, teacher in South Jersey, South New Jersey. And today or yesterday, I hear that the, the governor there, uh, as you were saying about the Super Bowl super spreader event, is allowing people to go indoors to watch the Super Bowl game. Uh, and opening up restaurants. Now, here's here's the point of this. He is up for re-election this year. And, you know, he's one of, I think, three states that are going to be involved in elections, uh, most notably the New York mayoral race uh, and two um, governorships. Uh, I, I think the other one is in, in, in um, uh, maybe even in your state of Kentucky. I'm not sure where the other one is, or Mississippi maybe. Um, but the facts are these. We can't afford to allow politics and elections to determine the safety of the American people. And what the Biden administration was trying to do to the, the Major League Baseball Players Association, the commissioner's office said, let's delay it a month and start the season, you know, May 1st. No, what they end up having to do with the back and forth, and, and I'm a huge union guy, as you know, this show has been sponsored by unions. They're concerned about something else. And of course, these unions are not worried about people making, you know, 35 bucks an hour. These people are making at the minimum $500,000 a year at a minimum. And people are making $30 million to pitch a baseball. So it, it's, it's crazy. And it's just common sense. But at the very least, the Biden administration is actually talking to these people, as opposed to Trump saying, oh, yeah, just go do what you want. 
I mean, I guess we're at the very least we have sane, competent people, you know, being able to do what they want, and you know, uh, uh, give MSNBC, uh, you know, the ability to promote the fact that Fauci was not allowed to go on Rachel Maddow, and now he made the statement and they run the ad that he's able to go on and say what he needs to say, regardless if he's, uh, you know, positive or negative about the Biden administration uh, and working for them. We're in a better situation, but my God, there's so much, well, I don't know how else to say it, but crap that Biden is dealing with right now, two days, uh, two weeks and a day in, that was left by the previous uh, administration. And, you know, he just has to take it one day at a time. I guess the question for you, Doc, is that is there... Is there a game plan that you feel comfortable on getting all the vaccines out? And if we can, and I'm going to talk to you about education in a minute, is there is there a likelihood that by the end of summer, which is what Dr. Fauci has said sometime in the fall, that we could be back to semi-normal? Or is that too much to ask for? And if we have a Super Bowl weekend that's out of control, does that push us back another month? Well, it'll definitely push us back a month or so, and that's what's so frustrating. I think that it likely, it's all, well, I think it's very likely that we will be back to near normal the end of this year, providing we don't get further iterations of this virus. I don't know how to get the vaccines out overnight. An old saying in Iowa is you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. You have to play the deck of hands you're dealt. And Biden was dealt a very poor deck with an infrastructure that wasn't there that should have been built up over the previous year. And so to build that up in weeks is extremely difficult, if if not impossible to do. Plus, we don't have the vaccines. And now because everybody's been spreading the virus, they may need to get a booster. So I went from maybe one shot for a vaccination to then a two-shot vaccine, now two-shot vaccine plus a booster. And all of that creates problems. Believe me, making the vaccines for the entire population and making a booster for the entire population is a huge effort. But revaccinating people, that is also extremely difficult to do, maybe even more difficult to do than getting the product. So yes, this is very frustrating. The good news is, and I don't know if I can explain this, but I will try, is that in these mutations, in these variants, the one that we're concerned about, very concerned about, is the Brazilian and South African variants that can evade the vaccine, or at least some of the vaccine's effectiveness. Well, it turns out they have the same mutation. They derived this mutation completely separately. And now there's reports that the UK virus in England has also developed this same type of mutation. So you have three viruses that randomly chose this same mutation, which isn't 100% effective at evading the vaccine, but they chose it to incorporate into their genome. Well, that to me means there may not be any other options for these guys. Otherwise, they would have found different solutions. Maybe that's the only solution. And if that's the case, then this vaccine will provide protection. When I say this vaccine, the vaccine that we currently have will provide protection for the majority, vast majority of severe illnesses, even with these variants. And once you get the booster, this pandemic may be dead. It may die out. That's the best case scenario. That's what I'm hoping for. But if everybody keeps having Super Bowl parties and spreading this virus around, the viruses may be able to find another variation which can defeat the vaccine. Because remember, it can't mutate if it doesn't reproduce and spread. So if you stop the spread, you stop the mutations. So it's very, very important that we do this. We need to follow public health advice. We need to stay at home, watch the Super Bowl game with your children and wife. Don't have Super Bowl parties. Talking to the great Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh here on the Jeff Santos Show. We'll uh, take your phone calls uh, coming up at 772-223-2362. That's 772-223-2362. I'm, 
I'm concerned uh, about a situation with our schools as well. And we've talked about this, and I had Melissa Tomlinson on yesterday or two days ago, and uh, we we spoke with Robert Craig as well of Wisconsin Citizen Action, and he's telling me that what is happening is a lot of wealthy, in some cases progressive, in some cases conservative parents, are putting pressure on governors and mayors. We see this in New York City as an example. Uh, And a lot of the times, these parents have nannies that take care of the kids and everything else. Uh, And they don't like the idea of little Johnny and Susie running around with their skateboard, uh, you know, in the living room. Uh, So they want to see their kids into school. And I understand that in a general principle. But here's the point that I think is a win-win. And, Doc, I want to get your thoughts on this. I have, as you well know, been pushing a 2K a month proposal uh, for at least the time being, whether you're talking about six months or a year, at the very least until we can get an infrastructure investment bill, Green New Deal bill, the second one that we're probably going to get through Bernie Sanders reconciliation so we avoid the stupidity of the filibuster uh, the Republicans play that games with. And what I'm saying is that for teachers and parents of, of students, some of them who are working class and poor, who are working three jobs, and th- th- they're still not getting the unemployment checks that we'll discuss with our good friend Rob Scott, the great economist DPI, later on today. I think that if you were to give the 2K checks to teachers, you know, who make probably, what, $60,000 a-, a year, maybe sixty-five. dollars you know, the, the, the beginners, the, the, the newbies at 23, 24, they make about 30K and it goes up. Some, you know, up there, uh, close to the six figures. But for the most part, y- you have, you know, people that are maybe the most important profession, along with doctors and nurses, in the country. And we're, we're basically saying, well, you just gotta, you just got to be on the front line worker. Sorry, just go to school here. And, and people can die, and the teacher can potentially get it to the student, the student give it to the teacher, and then bring it home. And now we get another super spreader event. This is something that I disagree with the Biden administration on, because this is 100 days that he wants to install getting kids back to school. I think that's far, far too uh, reckless a push at this moment. And on top of that, if you give the 2K a month, that means the people can stay home, teach the kids you know, from the computer, and at the same time, you don't have to risk your own health by working, you know, two or three jobs at a McDonald's or a 7-Eleven or whatever. Give me your thoughts, because this is something to me that should be communicated to the American people. Because if you have a kid in public unit, public school, or private school for that matter, then I think you should be aware of these options. Your thoughts. Well, that's a multifaceted question, so I'll, I'll try to remember okay. everything. But let's... Let's talk about schools. I do think there's been a lot of spinning of the data. The data which comes out, which has come out, which shows that schools are safer, has been equated to being safe. They say they're safer than having your child in the community. Yes, but kids aren't going out in the community. Parents are sheltering them pretty much at home or within a bubble. So I think that's a little misleading. Because when I've looked at the data, the data indicates that schools, if they do all of the types of interventions that need to be done, such as wearing masks and social distancing, and ideally they should be fixing ventilation, they can have maybe a safe environment that's twice as safe as out in the community. Well, that doesn't do a whole lot when the spread in the community is five to ten times what it should be. So you need to lower the spread in the community, get the viral spread safer, start wearing masks, social distancing in schools, installing units that can sanitize the air, keep the kids in pods or small class sizes, and have ample testing. So when that gets up and running, yes, you can start to think about opening schools. And of course, that's contingent on having a low, having low viral spread in the communities. Now, I think that your analogy or example of why schools are wanting to be open isn't just because the parents are, you know, being stressed out by their children being at home, but also the parents want to go to work. They need to get the economy running. And you can't get the right. parents to work if they're babysitting or child caring 
the child at home. So you almost have to open up schools first before fully getting the economy going. And that's why we need to be investing in the infrastructure of schools. And I but, think but we hold discussed on, Doug, this but back let, in let, August. Let, let, me, let me interrupt you there, because I think that, yeah. you know, I, I'm not disagreeing with you in terms of, of, the, of the scenario of, of, of students, you know, needing to go back to school. In a perfect world, they should all be in school, because it's much easier to, to have a teacher, and particularly in a smaller classroom size of 30 versus 40 kids, talk to a teacher and, and vice versa than doing it on a computer. That being said, if you if you get the two K to the teachers and to the to the and to the people, uh, of course, general population, anybody making, in my opinion, under 150 K should be getting it. What that does is it it takes the person who's working three jobs, you know, it takes the, that person and they don't only maybe have to work one job and they can spend time with the kids. You know, maybe the, the mother and dad can, you know, one work at night, one work during the, the uh, afternoons or whatever. And, and, and it would have at least one parent working there, right? But it would also, that, that parent wouldn't have to go to, to work to make money if he's getting or she's getting some, you know, sustainable dollars, 2K a month, to be able to stay home and to work with the kid, if you follow my line of thinking here. Well, that's, I mean, that's true, but a lot of jobs are essential, and that's where we're running into problems, Jeff. I mean, Amazon needs to have the stock shelves, so do the grocery stores. You need to have delivery. I mean, a lot of people are classified as frontline necessary workers. Fair enough. And so sure. they need protection. You know, I mean, that's the problem. It's not just an economic thing. It's a staples. You need to get food. You need to have your electricity running. You need to have your car repaired. We're This has gone on far too long. Our reserves are running out. And so as I was saying back in August, we were talking about getting these schools up and running. They need to do this ASAP, meaning they need to make the investment and put them top priority. And also top priority to get this viral spread down. And that means you're going to have to do mandates. Personally, I would like to see a one-month closure and reset. I think I would overall agree with you. it's going to I be think Melissa a said lot, that too. Yeah, a lot less expensive than trying to limp us along with checks every month for who knows how long because of the viral spread you have. You can't really reset the economy and adjust what you need to adjust. You could take that month's time, upgrade your facilities, make sure you don't have good viral, you know, a lot of viral spread, get case tracking then could start. So all of this should be considered. So there's a lot of options I think should be on the table, but I do agree with you, the option of having the children go back in an unsafe school environment with high community spread is not a good idea. And we cannot have United States citizens dying of starvation because they can't afford to buy food. So you are going to need in the short term to get checks out to them to allow them to get by. How long that is is going to depend upon how long it takes them to get the economy built back so that it can function safely during this pandemic. And that's why I said it needs to go hand in hand, full steam ahead. And when you talk about trillions, whether it's one trillion, whether it's two trillion, I'm not sure you can build a new economy to get that bridge to with two trillion. It may need greater investment in that in our economy and infrastructure. We're uh, speaking with Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh. Let's go to the phones. Going to do uh, another uh, great uh, person who has been involved in, in medicine as respiratory therapist, our good friend John. You are next with Dr. Cavanaugh. Go right ahead, John. Yeah, I just wanted to just briefly say uh, that uh, Stephanie Kelton and Rob Scott and, and many economists are saying, yeah, that we can spend a lot more than two trillion dollars. That. The economy at this point could afford to do that. But I also wanted to say, and this is something that Dr. Kavanaugh said uh, a little bit differently, but I think this makes a nice bumper sticker, Dr. Fauci quoting him exactly, uh, the virus can't mutate if it doesn't replicate. It's a parasite. 
so if we don't provide opportunities for it to replicate, then it won't. And if it takes the criminal justice system to actually pull that off, including mandates, I'm all for it. Because uh, one, I've heard this morning, and this is astounding, one third of caregivers uh, don't believe, uh, you know, won't get vaccinated. Like, I'm sorry, your, your, your license should be ripped up in front of you and you should be taken off. Uh, get somebody else, get some retired people that have already, uh, like myself, that have already been, uh, well, I haven't had the vaccine yet, but, you know, people that have had the vaccine and, uh, you know, replace them. I, you know, I have no use for it anymore. If a little island country, and I know it's an island country, Taiwan, but it's 25 million people jam-packed on a little island can pull off doing all of those things that need to be done to bring community spread down, you know, New Zealand too, by the way. And, and, and well, New, New Zealand is a little bit different, but yeah, and Australia, it's like a continent. New Zealand's different in that there's only 5 million people that live in a, in a country the size of the United Kingdom, which has 55 million or 60 million population. So, um, you know, in a densely populated place, I think they get, you know, they did a bang up job of mechanically right. doing what you needed to do. And they no, had I people you. like Dr. Kavanaugh in charge uh, from uh, SARS-1 who put a policy in place, and we had a policy in place, uh, you know, and the president chose to ignore it and do nothing about it. And, you know, if he would have taken the initiative at the top, then 450,000 people would be probably alive or at least 300,000 people would probably be alive, and we wouldn't be having this uh, discussion. Yeah, no, you're right on. Uh, I just got limited time here, so uh, Dr. Kavanaugh, respond if you can to uh, what our great friend John is talking about. Oh, I agree with everything he says. I just have to, we just have to reiterate it. We have within our capability the ability to stop this virus, to snuff out the pandemic, and it's because we're not following public health advice and embracing science that we're being ravaged by this disease. And those, yeah, and those individuals who last year had SARS and became deeply infected with COVID-19, they may get reinfected with these new variants. So this is something we need to take seriously and we need to put income behind it, we need to put our resources behind it, and we need to use our knowledge to stop this pandemic. John, thank you for the call. Dr. Kavanaugh, it's so great to have it. I know you'll be off next week. We'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. Uh, You enjoy uh, your time away, and uh, be safe, uh, and please be safe uh, in your great state of Kentucky. Uh, Thank you.